In other news tonight, one of the two U.S. presidents born in Vermont took the oath of office exactly a century ago, and a celebration was underway in Plymouth. Fox 44's Mike Howey was at the President Calvin Coolidge State Historic Site earlier today. John Calvin Coolidge Jr. is the only U.S. president to date to have been sworn in by his own father. It happened right here at John Sr.'s homestead in Plymouth, and there was a reenactment of it Thursday afternoon. It increases the value of everybody's property. I, Calvin Coolidge, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear. Chris Jeter is Calvin Coolidge's great-grandson. Dan Percy made the two-hour drive south from Williston to watch him play the president. I read the author's book. I've been here before with my father oh, many moons ago. And uh, by reading that book and knowing it's going to be today that I wanted to come back and see how the real reenactment would be. Coolidge spent his adult life not far from there in Northampton, Massachusetts, but the vice president was visiting his father in Plymouth when President Warren Harding died on the West Coast. Colonel Coolidge was awakened uh, around midnight when Winfred Perkins came up from Bridgewater, which was where the nearest telegraph office was with the information about President Harding's death out in San Francisco. John Calvin Coolidge Sr. was a notary public and a former Vermont state lawmaker. He administered the presidential oath of office to his own son. Former Vermont Governor Jim Douglas played John Sr. He's a longtime board member of the Calvin Coolidge Presidential Foundation. Well, I don't think I should give up my day job, but uh, one thing that the foundation has done for many years before I got involved was reenact the Lamplight Homestead inauguration. Dan Percy wanted to visit at least two other locations nearby while he was in Plymouth. I wanted to go up and see the, the Sugarwoods and go and pay my tribute to his uh, gravesite. And for you night owls out there, there was another reenactment at 247 Thursday morning. That was exactly 100 years to the minute after President Coolidge was sworn in. Mike Hoey, Fox 44 News, Plymouth. The 45th president called it a sad day in American history.